Welcome to another edition of the Basketball Teacher Podcast. Our mission is to bring you discussions on a wide array of topics in the coaching world to grow players on and off the court. You can connect with us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, and also reach us directly through email at basketballteacherpodcast at gmail.com. Now, here's your host, Coach Mike Hernandez. Alrighty, welcome back. Thank you guys so much for joining us, whatever platform you're listening on, wherever in the country, in the world. I know we have international listeners. Thank you guys so much for joining us here as we get going on another episode. And this one is about breaking down film, talking specifically more about breaking down film after a win and after a victory and the process of breaking down film. And I really like this topic because... As, as you guys listening know, there's just so many different ways to break down film. There's so many different ways to dissect a game film, to get that information to your players. And so on a personal level, I'm always really interested in hearing different perspectives when it comes to breaking down film. And that's what we're going to discuss today, a full, bit of a focus on breaking down film after a victory. So really excited, really looking forward to getting into this one. And I am really excited to also have a guest with me to discuss this topic. Uh, Coach Matt Hauer is here. Coach, how are you doing today? Doing well, doing well. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, absolutely. Really, really looking forward to kind of diving into this one. And like I said, I'm always interested because this part in particular of breaking down film, it's seems like every coach kind of has their own system and has their own way of doing it. So I, I love getting a chance to t talk about that. So let's go ahead and kind of start coach with your basketball journey or coaching journey. Where, where's the game taking you? Where's your coaching journey taking you? Sure. Yeah. So um, I think like probably uh, many of the, the people that, that listen, you know, grew up playing basketball and um, had obviously kind of fell in love with the game, um, played all throughout high school and then, then went to college um, trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Ended up uh, landing over at Colorado State uh, University, not playing, um, but was quickly able to get connected with a coach. Uh, up here at Fort Collins High School, Monte Alcarez, where he kind of took me under his wing as a, as a young college kid and uh, brought me into his program. And I was an assistant for him for a number of years all throughout college. Um, got to learn so much and, and was actually on the boys' side, uh, which was a, a cool experience to, to kind of see both sides. And after four years with him, then um, slid over to the women's side uh, and, and took over the program at Fort Collins High School still. So finishing up, uh, getting into year nine over there uh, and, and also teaching as well, as you know. And so um, been been spending a lot of time there and, and it's been an incredible, uh, incredibly fortunate that, that I've been able to kind of land at such a good place. And I, I'm just curious for your experience personally how have things changed in the last nine years for you what what are some things that you've noticed uh, whether it's personally or as coaching what are some what are some changes that you've noticed over the past nine years and also what are some things that maybe have like stayed the same with your coaching sure man that's a good question um I, I think you know just when you start coaching you just don't know what you don't know yet mm -hmm. you know it's kind of that that idea of you know you think you're doing it all right and I look back and I'm just like, man, that was so dumb, you know, and a lot of mistakes back then. But, you know, I was trying my hardest and, and doing the best I could and had great mentors. And, um, you know, I'm sure in nine more years, I'll probably look back <laughs> at, at this year and go, man, yeah, you knew nothing. And so, you know, it's just adapting and changing. And um, the, probably the big uh, adjustment was kind of when you take over your own program, it's less X's and O's, right? As an assistant, you mm -hmm. can kind of just focus in on the basketball and, and the program building is kind of, you know, you're, you're a leader of the program building, but kind of the, the foundation of that's already been built and you're just upholding that. And when you take over your own program, now it's your, you know, program building and, and making mm -hmm. sure that things are getting ran the, the way you want. And, and, you know, the X's and O's are obviously is still a, a huge part of that. And, you got to figure out what works best for your team and your program. But there's so much more of that other, which is, you know, incredibly fun, but also incredibly challenging. Mm -hmm. um, you know, basketball would be easy if it was just basketball. <laughs> but as, 
as we very well know, it's just, it's not, and right. it never will be. So. And, and I think that being an assistant is such a great learning opportunity because you kind of get to just focus on the basketball portion of things for the most part. I mean, every assistant's different, but I know typically assistants get to really focus in on the basketball part. But then once you get into like that head coach, it, it's a program that you're running and there's a lot more besides basketball that you're responsible for. So definitely agree with that. And I really like that, that phrase, you don't know what you don't know. You know, I, and I think every coach has had that moment where after a couple of years, they think they have like everything figured out. And then they realize like, oh, there's all this stuff I actually didn't know. And I had no idea I didn't know it. So I think we've all been there too. Now, speaking of like knowledge and, and growing and, and knowing things, uh, something about you in particular that uh, I, I learned for, for my research is that you have your own website, coachhoward.com, which I think is great. And there's a lot of coaching tools and a lot of things that you have on there. So what kind of motivated you to kind of start your own website and to cure all these resources? And, and can you talk us through what sort of things are on there? Yeah, so actually web design and, and kind of that thing was something that I taught myself in college and kind of have a side business with. So that's mm -hmm. kind of, I guess, the product of a website. I never really intended to, to have a website, but I ended up building that little practice plan builder. And I don't know if you, you were able to check that out, but Mm -hmm. Basically, it, it helps coaches create practice plans. Uh, it was inspired by Coach Kamaki over at Sierra Canyon. She was kind of making this drill bank. And then after the season, she would go in and she'd kind of like count it by skill. And she would hand write everything. And I was like, there's got to be, you know, <laughs> classic, there's got to be a better way. Um, and so, but I, but I love that because I got feedback from my kids. You know, you do the exit interviews and, and things like that. And, you know, Coach, it felt like, we do a lot of the same drills consistently. And I was like, you know, that, that's probably true. I'd like to see kind of that data behind that. So um, obviously, you know, coronavirus has infected all our lives. And for me, I guess it's turned into um, having a ridiculous amount of time to work on spreadsheets. Um, and so uh, what I ended up building was kind of this, this builder that you can put in your drills. It tracks the skills that you're trying to track. And then it kind of, formulates over time, you know, how much you've been working on shooting, how much you've been working on driving, so on and so forth. Um, and so that kind of just crazy enough just blew up. Like I had to turn my notifications off uh, <laughs> because on Twitter, because it just went crazy and it, and it was super cool and got a lot of cool feedback, um, you know, made a lot of connections, you know, I'm chatting with people from, know Spain and and things like that and, you know it's crazy um and so that was super cool and and so you know I, I didn't really ever plan it being any more than that and um but it just kind of cycled into these other tools that that I started building and, and most of them are just things that I wanted to use and that, that I found useful and then you know they're built so might as well toss them out to, mm -hmm. to coaches so then it turned into um a little leaderboard so we really want to track um you know and, and make it obvious for our girls this year of like who's winning drills more often and so you know again kind of like giving some data to your eye test i think so that mm -hmm. you know if we're looking at, at, at playing time and so on and so forth and kid comes to me like coach you know i i've been winning every single thing in practice on our leaderboards and i'm not playing that much you know, I think that's a good conversation piece to, oh, you know, like you are working hard in practice. Let's, let's see why maybe there's not a, not a, maybe it's not translating to games. We got to check in on that. Or maybe I'm making a bad choice and I should be playing that kid more. Mm -hmm. um, so having that data, then it turned into a, a little bit of like a itinerary builder that um, I kind of built for a, a basketball operations position. I was, I was kind of trying to get, and then it turned into, uh, that scout template, which uh, has gotten pretty popular as well. And that was something, again, just one, I was just so bored. <laughs> I, w I wasn't really sure we were going to have a season. And then, yeah. you know, as we, we kind of talked beforehand, we ended up looking like we were going to have one, um, which is awesome. But um, a few coaches reached out to me like, hey, what do you, what do, you do for your scout template? And you know, I, I was handwriting scout templates before this, you know, for, for all the tech stuff I do, I was, you know, I was like, again, there's got to like, yeah. I can probably do this better. And so just kind of dove into it. 
had a lot of fun fun with that and it was a good practice for me again I I kind of built it out of and I haven't watched or really broken down games in you know, probably eight months or so mm-hmm. and so I just needed to practice and and you know figured I could probably make something useful while I was practicing as well so really because I ended up with all of those tools um, I built the website I, I, again I never really planned on having the website but just kind of created a hub for uh, coaches just to be able to access that stuff if they want it contact information if they ever need help it's been super cool to see how other coaches like to do things and I've updated the, the spreadsheets kind of as, as we go. And um, so, yeah, it's just been, it's been kind of a, a interesting journey, I suppose, and learned a lot about Google sheets. Oh and yeah. So it's been, it's been good though. It's, it's funny because I feel that a lot of resources or a lot of coaching tools kind of get started that way where coaches have all of this stuff or they, they use all this stuff anyway. And, and for, some coaches, it seems like even in your case, it's like, well, I just want to put this all somewhere. And then you kind of think, well, this might be useful for other people. So if you if you want it, here it is. And then all of a sudden things like blow up that you didn't expect it. And uh, it's, it's funny how that works out that way. And, and definitely for those listening, uh, make sure you click on the link that'll be in the description of this episode. It, it has the link to the website and, and those coaching tools. And, and, they, and they look really useful and, and really beneficial. And um, you kind of gave some testimony there of... of coaches who seem to find a lot of use in it so uh, I think that's great and I think that the more resources you have at your disposal uh, it, ca- it can't hurt I know that there's so much out there but but this looks really useful and really beneficial so that's great and kind of is a great segue into our, our topic kind of going over film and breaking down film and, and things of that nature so I, I want to start with kind of your process because every coach kind of has a process of digesting game film and and I know we're kind of specifically talking about it after a win but let's kind of talk in general so when it's time for you to break down film after a game what does that process look like for you sure sure yeah that's something that's definitely like I I guess maybe transitioned Mm -hmm. uh, throughout throughout my time of of really like what I'm trying to get to and you know and and we've been so fortunate I, I think, you know, obviously the, the challenges of, of the pandemic, but I think it's also just been able to share so many ideas, you know, with podcasts like this. And, and I feel like there's a Zoom every day where you can go learn stuff. So that's definitely kind of influenced, I, I guess, even more of what I want to do as well. But, um, you know, I, I love diving into film. And, mm-hmm. I, and I think my girls sometimes, they, they, they get a little... Um, angry because our our film (laughs) sessions probably go a little bit longer than they than they should and so that's I think the biggest thing is is trying to you know be cognizant of time and and especially at the high school level when kids get you know homework and 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 whatnot but um I guess my process um for sure is I try to as best as I can I try to not touch it for you know kind of that 24-hour rule you know let let the film digest um you know, that, that's definitely the in theory idea because, you know, sometimes I'm just so frustrated, you know, you go home and you watch immediately and then you just get more frustrated. Mm-hmm. And by the morning, even though you watch it, it's just like, you know, there's nothing you can do about it anymore. And so i um, trying to really push that to the kind of next day and, and so that you can watch it with a clear mind and, and actually process the, the the things that are helpful for your team and, and for your program. Um, and then moving, moving from there, we actually, uh, and this is something we did one year, we kind of stopped it and we're definitely going back to it because I, I loved it and, and we missed it. And uh, last year we didn't do it, but we have kind of a, a template and we're, we're, we're fortunate enough to have access to huddle. And so mm. all our girls are Huddle's on great. it and, and they can they can they can see everything, and we do the breakdowns as well, which makes makes life incredibly nice and easy. Um, so uh, we actually kind of made a little film viewing sheet, and the girls almost had like homework. And so what we do, and there I'll pull it up, and and it's going to kind of transform from year to year, kind of um, looking at things. But basically, it's like. We got little boxes of great offensive possessions, great defensive possessions. 
And it's their job to go into it and they just watch the film and they mark down the time. And it sort of causes them to sort of lead the film sessions. And that's definitely been the best way we've done it so far. And so they'll be like, coach, I found a great rotation. It was at, you know, 25 minutes, 20 seconds. And we'll kind of scroll through 25, 20. And they'll talk us through what was great about it. Um, and, and I found that that player led sort of, you know, way of teaching and learning, uh, you, you know, from, I guess, the, the teaching background is if you can teach something, you know it well. And so having them identify those things is definitely helpful. And so we're, so we did that and, and we had a lot of success and, um, you know, I, where I wanted to move to is one building on kind of our foundation and kind of our philosophy of, of more than just X's and O's and, and trying to find like, you know, positive body language things, things that, you know, impact the game probably more than we recognize, mm -hmm. um, trying to find that stuff. And then again, you know, and I, and I learned this from, I don't know if it was a Zoom or a podcast anymore. You know, they're all <laughs> kind of blending together yeah, I get at you. this point. All my notes are just, um, <laughs> but just really focusing and, and talking about the positives. And because, it, you know, it's kind of that, that idea of, you know, we watch film and obviously we're trying to identify mistakes and, and that's huge. And, um, you know, that's how you get better is learning from your mistakes. But it's it's kind of making sure that we're focusing on those next steps forward. Because so, if you tell, you know, it's kind of that red button idea. If you tell mm -hmm. them not to touch the red button, the only thing that they can think about is touching the red button. <laughs> sure. You know, but if I tell a kid not to do this, they don't, we got to focus on what to do. You know, we can identify that, yeah, that was an issue. Mm -hmm. What are the steps you actually have to take to move forward instead of, oh, just don't do this. Because they right. don't know, you know, there's 8 million other things that they could do besides not that so that's definitely been kind of a, a big focus hopefully this year and continuing to have it be player led and and kind of work through that and it makes it more efficient too and so, they get so a when it's more buy -in. when it's player led uh, i just want to clarify are you expecting that your players they watch the film themselves and then are able to identify these possessions along the way? Or are you talking about the kind of watching it together and then having the players stop to point these out? Can, can you just clarify that? I'm sorry if you touched on it before and I just missed it. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a good question. I probably just skipped over it. But they, they watch it before. And okay. so, um, you know, again, I'm, I'm fortunate to work in the school. So I just have these forms and they're, they're really open. And I can share it with you too, exactly what it looks like. But um, they, uh, they just always stop by They're on my desk in my office and they grab a sheet and usually they do it like during lunch or during their off period real quick. They, they kind of crank through it. Um, and I really encourage them to do it with another player. And so usually it's kind of buddy work so they can watch it together, kind of mark down what they saw and then they show up to, to whatever, you know, a lot of times, especially when we're kind of in the grind of the season. Sometimes it's, they have to watch it that next morning for a film session that, that afternoon, uh, which is a little bit challenging, um, but a surprising amount of buy-in from our kids in it. Yeah, they actually really that. enjoyed that's, doing it that that's way. Commitment. That's a commitment for them to, to yeah. do that, and they have to, to buy in. And, and is that something that you kind of let them know, like, up front? Like, hey, if you want to be a part of this program, one of your responsibilities is you are going to be, like, looking at film and, and watching film. Is that something that you've kind of always had as a philosophy as a coach? Have you kind of developed that over time? Um, so we probably – so we started this – doing it this way two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and it was something that the girls actually built. And so before kind of, you know, in our preseason meetings, so on and so forth, we kind of talked about goals and, and what we wanted to do. And it was actually kind of something that they sort of came up with um, on their own. So the, the buy-in kind of was there. And so then that next year, we kind of had a little bit of a different group, wasn't so into the film. Mm -hmm. um, and, but we got about like halfway through the season and some of the girls were like, I think we want to go back to that. <laughs> and so looking forward, you know, now it's not necessarily going to be a optional thing anymore for me because I, I really enjoyed it. And I think that 
even the kids that didn't necessarily um, enjoy it as much, I think they recognized the, the value of it when we didn't do it. Mm. And so, um, you know, kind of what was, what we're going to kind of build on, on with that too, is trying to pair older kids with younger kids in our, in our team. So like, you know, this week is a senior with a freshman so that the senior can help the freshman too. Cause they're, you know, they'll watch our film. We're probably going to have one or two freshmen playing on our varsity team this year. They're going to watch the film and they're just going to be so overwhelmed. They're going to have no idea. And so I, I think they really need that support to kind of, right. Oh, this is what we're looking for in our program. And again, having that kind of player led kind of leadership, I think there's so much value to that. And then again, if they do it, it makes our film sessions quicker instead of me just kind of rolling through it and groaning on and highlighting this and highlighting that. And all of a sudden we burnt X amount of time. If they have their sheets ready, they're like, Hey, we're going to this time. We're looking at this. We're moving on. We're going to this time. We're looking at this. We're moving on. And so that investment, uh, I suppose early kind of turns into saving time. And, um, so, so that's been, yeah, incredibly uh, helpful, I think, and, and something we're definitely trying to get back to. And I think it's been awesome so far. And in that process where the players are looking at film and they're breaking down film and then, you know, you yourself, you know, if, you, if you're looking at the, the film, how have you kind of navigated with these, I guess, discrepancies perhaps where there's certain things that pop out and you notice right away and maybe your, your players notice different things. How do you kind of like go through that process where maybe what you're seeing and, and what your players are seeing maybe look completely different? Yeah, I think a little bit of that starts with a little bit of front loading. Like usually we'll do it together one game, sure. you know, and it usually it's our, in, in Colorado, we're allowed, um, I think it's technically two scrimmage games before our, regular season in a normal year obviously mm -hmm. um and so we'll go through and we'll do a scrimmage game with the sheet together and kind of highlight like this is what this looks like this is what this looks like um and so they kind of have that foundation but um you know i i think it's okay to have to see things different um than your players as well and i think there's value into seeing things different of you know, and we can talk about if they have a reason of why, you know, if they think something's a great rotation and I think it's an awful rotation, well, that's perfect. We're going to have that conversation of mm -hmm. why do you think that's a good rotation? And, you know, they might might see it differently than than me and, you know, and, and maybe they're right. You know, oh, I see what you did there. You know, you can be right. Or it's, no, that wasn't close. And this is why we're having bad rotations. And now we get to have that conversation of that yeah, we just misunderstood for whatever reason and thought that that's what we were supposed to do when in reality we need to be doing this. Um, and so, you know, I think those discrepancies bring up good conversations or, you know, the, I might think of shot as bad, but they had a different angle when they were playing. And so they have that experience too of being on the floor and seeing it from the floor as well. And they might remember it like, oh yeah, like, no, this was a good shot for me. And, yeah. you know, from my angle, it looked awful. But for them, they're like, no, I caught it clean. The closeout, you know, wasn't great. So so I hoisted it and I was confident. All right, move on. Perfect. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and there's um, definitely um, there's definitely value in, like, knowing what your players are thinking because they're the ones who are playing. And it's, you know, I, I think for, for you, it kind of allows you to kind of get in their head. So at least you understand their thought process. So that if you do need to correct something, then at least you know what they were thinking beforehand, rather than trying to correct something and not even knowing why, like they did it in the first place. If that makes sense, right? Exactly, and I think film's perfect for that. Um, you know, because it's so hard to, especially in practice. You know, you, you playing small sided games, kind of like or whatever, and they make a turnover. It's so hard to always ask why. You know, you'd, you'd get through eight set, you know, eight <laughs> sets and uh, there's your hour and a half, two hours. If I had asked players why they made every single mistake, sometimes they just, you know, read it wrong and move on. But, you know, film kind of helps us process through that why a little bit easier. Um, you know, it helps the younger girls kind of learn. And, and I think especially at, 
at the high school level, there's so much learning of basketball that still has to take place. Sure. Um, that, you know, that, that really helps us learn what it should be and, and what it should look like. And um, hopefully, you know, when they go on and, and eventually some of them will play college basketball, they'll kind of already have that they've learned and now it's recognition and, and understanding mm-hmm. and that'll make things quicker and hopefully helpful for, for whatever college coach they eventually play for. Yeah, absolutely. I think just, just building that, their knowledge of, of the game itself. And I think that, I know I've talked to other coaches about this as well, that the more that <clears throat> your players learn about the game, the quicker they get on the court because the quicker they can act, the quicker they can react if they understand the, the why of why they're doing something. It allows them to more quickly make those adjustments rather than being more responsive if they don't necessarily have the why in their mind. So I, I definitely can see the the benefit of that for sure. Now, I think, go ahead. And I, I think building on that, like, you know, I, I think I, I noticed with this with teaching too, is like mm-hmm. a lot of times they just don't know, you know, <laughs> and they've been playing basketball for, you know, X amount of time, but a lot of times they really just don't know the why and they're, they're brilliant kids. And, and once they do know the, they kind of, kind of build from that but I, I think it's kind of that thing of like assuming you know we should know this and you know I know I've been there like how do you not know this like you're <laughs> 17 years old but sometimes they don't and it's not their fault they just weren't taught it at sure. some point and so well. you know it's important to find you know what they do and don't know and um, build those those relationships so they can be courageous and not embarrassed to say that they don't know something so that we can correct it you know, and, and we talk about that a lot in our program. It's, it's okay to not know once, okay? But we're going to talk about it, and we're going to we're going to help you help you know what it should look like. And now you, now we're expecting you to execute it. But if you have questions and you don't answer or ask them, how are we going to how are we going to help you? Right. You know. So. Yeah, and and I think that also goes into making sure as a coach you build a program and build an environment where questions are wanted. And where it's good to ask questions. I, I, I know I've been in classrooms as, as a student where, you know, asking a question was, was not something you wanted to do at all because then you get this weird look or, you know, feel like you're going to get made fun of or insulted for asking a question. But if players feel comfortable asking questions, then that means they want to learn. And I think that that's super helpful as well. Like they want to be there. They want to learn. They want to get better. And it's okay to not know, but kind of like you said, like ask. It's it, it's not okay to to not ask, right? I, I feel like that's kind of your philosophy. Yeah. So after, if you don't know in a game, you're just gonna hang out on the bench. For yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, maybe you have to learn uh, on the bench, right? So after a after a win, so let's say it's, it's a it's a it's a win, kind of going down. You're breaking down film. You're breaking down film. Your team's breaking down film, and if it's Breaking down film after like a tough team, a tough opponent, uh, a team that could have gone either way or just a difficult team in general, it, it, is the emotional process of going through that game or the, are the conversations you're having with your players any different? Because I, I know that there's differences between, you know, you win this really tough game and the, maybe the way you look at film versus, you know, you beat a team, but you were quote unquote, supposed to beat them. Is there any kind of difference in the approach of breaking down film afterwards? Uh, for me, no. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I, I think, you know, we always try to stay pretty even a, a, as far as emotions throughout the year. And, and we always talk after games, whether it's a great win or whether it's a bad loss. You know, we always chat, you know, you have tonight to be happy or you have tonight to be sad. And the morning we're back at it, we move on. Um, and, and so we, we kind of harp on that a lot is, you know, we're going to we're gonna love the, the good wins and, and we're going to hate the bad losses, but we're going to hate them for the rest of the day and then we're going to move on and, and get to the next one and, and be ready for the next one so that we can cycle up. And then we can look back maybe after the end of the year and see, see all those things. And um, so I, I think the process as far as film for us at least is relatively um, the same as, you know, good plays are good plays or not. They were in a, against a team that was not as good or whether they were uh, against a team that was great. And we want to highlight those and mistakes are mistakes, you know, mistakes might happen more often against a team that's really good. And, and maybe we spend 
a little bit more time kind of seeing what happens, you know, but sometimes it could just be like, man, they're really athletic and aggressive. And so we're going to turn the ball over more of this game regardless of, Mm -hmm. you know, what we do. That's just the way they play. They turn teams over more. You know, I don't know that that necessarily should, should impact, you know, maybe we get a little bit more opportunities of learning because there, there's a little bit more challenges, but, um, you know, there, I think the process kind of stays the same because it's still basketball and they're still learning experiences and there's still positives and negatives to, to take from each one, uh, no, no matter what. I think that one of the things that I had a bit of a difficulty with or a bit of a challenge with, especially if it was breaking down film, um, if, if it's after a win, especially after like a tough team where if I'm going over film with, with players and let's say they, they come across a situation where, you know, a, another player, another girl, she she made a shot or made a three or whatever. And then a player from my team will be like, oh, well, you know, I didn't, I didn't close out well enough or, you know, I, I didn't get my hands up or anything in time. And then you as a coach, you look at the film and you're like, well, no, you pretty much did. It was just a good shot that they made. And like those things happen. Mm-hmm. So do you have to kind of go through that process with your players of, of having them understand like, Hey, like you pretty much did everything right. But sometimes players like make, make plays and that's okay. Do you have to kind of have those conversations with your team? Yeah. And I, I, Definitely. I, I think that's huge, too, is like, you know, basketball is a very great game, but it's also an ugly game. And like, mm. you know, again, you, you think and, and I've had this conversation with our girls a lot. You know, if you're shooting, you know, four out of ten from the three, you're missing most of your shots. Yeah, You're doing really, really well. <laughs> you know, and that's hard. It's hard on your brain to fail. You know, it, technically, you missed a shot. You're failing more often than not, but you're actually really helping your team. And so, you're just trying to highlight that, you know, in, in that example, like a good closeout is a good closeout, whether or not they make the shot. And there's going to be players that are just very good, and they're going to make shots and and having that conversation with them. And, and maybe that's a little bit more of of film beforehand of, mm-hmm. you know, this kid is going to score 15 on us, no matter what we do. We're going to work our butts off. We're going to guard her with two. She's going to score 15 on us, and we're going to move on. We're not going to sulk when she makes a basket. Now, if we do the job wrong and we don't run her off the line because she's a three-point shooter, yeah, then we can kind of mm-hmm. be mad at ourselves. We run her off the line, and she makes a step back three, give her a high five, and let's go move on to the next play. You know, and so – I, I think it's maybe more of focusing again in, in that film. Of, you know, you can do the right thing and the result may not necessarily be what you want. And so it's still doing it right and doing it well. And the results are the results. But, you know, it, like, it's kind of like I hate that, that idea is like, oh, it went in, so it's a good shot. No, that was a bad shot that you just happened to make, you know. Yeah. And so, like, coach, I made it. It's like, yeah, but you're not making that, you know, at, at any high percentage. So it's, it's do it the right way, and you have to live with the results. And yeah. If you do it the right way, the results more often than not will work in your favor. Right. Not not ev- not every shot that your team makes is a good shot, and not every shot that you give up is bad defense. <laughs> you kind of have to kind of yeah. parse through, parse through both of those um, for sure. And and I think that one of the challenges that some coaches would have is if their players were, were kind of looking down film and you're kind of going over film with your players is, you know, players, they do know like the things that they do well, but some, some players, and I'm sure you can speak to this, just focus in on, you know, all of the mistakes they made or all the mistakes that they see. And it can be like very overwhelming because they see like, oh, this turnover, this shot that I should have made or this layup that I blew or whatever the case may be. So just for for you and kind of a culture and team building perspective, is there anything that you did or, or had to do specifically to kind of keep your players from basically like mentally going crazy because they just notice all these things and they want to improve like every single thing as soon as possible? Yeah, that's been, I, I think that's kind of been a huge 
area of learning for me mm-hmm. um, during this time and incredible resources on that sort of process from coach close over at UCLA. Um, they're so far ahead in kind of the, the mental game of basketball. And so just been diving in, into a lot and, you know, listening to coach close, you know, has made me realize like, man, I was not doing a good job. Um, <laughs> Or at least I, I didn't feel like I was doing a good job, but, and it, we, so we're building processes and, and I'm excited to kind of roll those out this year of, you know, kind of responding to challenges and, and literally practicing how you respond to things that don't go your way. Mm-hmm. Um, and going through those mental exercises, because, you know, we talked about the negative loop of, of getting out of your negative loop and, and moving on to the next play. And I think a lot of coaches talk about, oh, getting to the next play and things like that. But nobody really, like, teaches it as a skill. And Coach Close kind of brought this up. And, you know, that makes a lot of a lot of sense is we teach shooting form. Why would we teach and, and coach, oh, you made a turnover. What are you going to do? Are you going to hang your head and sulk? Well, no, the, now you're going to make three turnovers. You know, and so – actually building those processes so what it's going to turn into is when we watch film practicing our 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 response because that film that turnover even though it is on film and it's already moved on that will bring up feelings for that kid and and trying to work through and practice that that mental response in the film room will be will be helpful and and it's also you know again it's creating that kind of safe environment uh, for your kids that they trust you and that, that they want to want to get there to help and we're, we're here to get better. And I always tell them, I said, some days it's going to feel like you're being picked on today in film. Mm-hmm. And it's not like we mean to or, or what. We didn't set out to pick on player X or Y today, but you didn't play that well. And that's okay. It's basketball. You're going to have days where you don't play well. And now we, we got to learn from it and, and we got to get better. And so it's really having that, that trust and, and that yeah. response and also trying to sprinkle in again, trying to find positives for kids because they can build on their positives way easier than they can learn, I, I think, from their negatives. And it's, it's hard for them, especially, you know, if they're tired, you're in the grind of the season of, of kind of helping them through that, that process for sure. Yeah, I think trust is is a big word with that. There has to be a lot of trust in, in that your players know that you're not, you know, picking on them or, or anything like that. It's just basketball and just trying trying to get better and you still respect them as people and like them as people and you're not, you know, attacking their character or anything like that or taking any personal attacks at them. So definitely kind of a the fine line to balance. But once you hit that and, and you know and your players know, um, you really can have some really productive conversations and, and really get – a lot out of it um but it does take time and and that's for sure and i think the other thing that you said is definitely true is you know if you mistakes can compound on each other that if you worry or sulk or really focus in on that one turnover like you said like well now you're going to commit three turnovers now because that's all you're thinking about and i think for me personally i think one of the things too is like a, a coach is that i had to learn is just sort of like letting go and not necessarily harping on a, all of these different things. Like if there's all these different things that like I may notice with a player, but we have a game, you know, later that day, well, I got to just like focus on one in particular that I want them to get better on. Because if I try to like go at all these other things, I, at least for me personally, I I don't know if I'll get the result that I wanted, but maybe you've had a different experience with that. No, I, I agree. And I think it's also knowing your players individually Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, some kids are perfectly cool getting roasted in a film session and they want that and and they you know they have no issues with it and some kids you know they're they're going to shut down and so especially if it's in front of their teammates but maybe you can approach them one-on-one and say hey check out these clips and so that that definitely is sometimes I, I guess an additional part of the process sometimes is you know I'll, I'll pull 10 clips specifically and just text them to a player mm-hmm. and say hey watch these what do you think and we have that conversation, maybe not in front of everybody, um, but it's you know again, it's it's just dependent on that on that player too. Sure, sure, sure. 
Now, when you're when you're breaking down film, and let's say it's you know it's it's af it's after a win, regardless of whether it's you know a, a tough team or, or a team that maybe you felt like you were supposed to beat, and and you're breaking down that film, and your players are breaking down that film, and you know you're going to play that team again later in the season. It doesn't seem like your approach to to breaking down film really changes, but does your approach? in terms of, okay, we broke down this film, and now I also, as a coach, have to realize I'm going to play this team again, so I'm also kind of preparing to play them later. How do you kind of bridge the the gap of sort of breaking down film from this team that, that maybe we beat, and also, like, I know we're going to be playing them, let's say, you know, two weeks from now, and I got to be thinking about that as well. Yeah, I think, you know, for, for coaches, I, I, I think, you know, as we're breaking down film, we can start to, you know, think about, oh, we should guard this better. We should guard that better. But I think for the kids and for the players, it's really important to separate those. Mm -hmm. And so, like, we're doing our job of breaking down the film, positives and negatives. Because there's going to be X amount of games in between that game that you got to worry about. And so I think it's, you know, again, trying to stick to – the process and the consistency of what you do of keeping it the same and then when we have to scout or we're doing scout walkthrough yeah maybe we go back to that film that we watched but now we're looking at it through a different lens of how we moving forward we didn't guard this well last time this is how we're going to guard it this time mm -hmm. um, and, and so I, I think that there has to be that separation otherwise they're going to get overwhelmed and, and maybe lose focus for that next game that you need them to do to do well at. Um, so I think that, and, and that does happen for us. Uh, we, we usually play, we're kind of, I guess, lucky in our league is that we have, we have a pretty big league, but we have three other high schools that are pretty big in Fort Collins. And so we try to do uh, cross city games too, which are super fun. In a normal year, they're double headers with the boys. So, Usually we play our city teams twice every single year. Um, and that brings up a lot of feelings and, and you know, they want to be the best team in the city <laughs> sure. every single year. And um, But it, it, if we're worrying about what we're going to do next and that's two weeks away, that's going to, you know, we're going to lose three league games in between by the time we get there because we're so stressed about what we're going to do next for a game that mm -hmm. wasn't even ready, ready to be played. Sure. And – and I guess as an additional uh, kind of a follow up question to that, when you're kind of going over film and and breaking down that film and, and, you know, your players are breaking it down as well. Do you come across situations where you're kind of going over the film, you're kind of going over the, the positives and the negatives? And then the team that maybe you're playing, you know, later that day or, or, or the next day, maybe they could play, play like a completely different system, a completely different offense and a completely different defense. And not necessarily that the things from that previous game aren't applicable, but you also have to kind of transition into getting your players to also think about this next opponent that they're going to play who maybe is doing something completely different. Are there times when maybe like your film sessions go a, a different direction if you know that the next team you're going to play might be going in a completely different direction? Um, yeah, I, I think a little bit that that could lean into it of like, hey, you know, we guarded this this way. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe as, you know, ball screens, we, we had to guard it a certain way for one team. We're watching that in the film and we're like, you know, but this next team we're playing, they can't shoot it. So we're going <laughs> underneath them. Okay, yeah. You know. And so kind of having, maybe we still have that conversation, but again, I, I think it's important to try and separate those just because, sure. you know, if they blend together, um, they, I, I think that's tough. And, you know, our, our girls are, they're, they're good at scout and they do a good job of, of doing those sorts of things. And, and we're lucky to have just brilliant kids and they, they kind of buy into that stuff and they feel ready. So, um, you know, kind of a funky situation happened like that to us. Mm -hmm. last year of a team we played that was in our city we actually ended up the way that like a tournament ended up we played it three times and by the third time we I, I got filmed the morning of and all of a sudden they're running ball screen continuity and I was like holy crap like we, we didn't see ball screen continuity in the three games we had and then so 
you know, and that was something that we hopped in, you know, we, we kind of knew our base defense already and we kind of knew what we wanted to do. And um, they did a really good job of all of a sudden something that we hadn't done, what we had talked about is we started icing ball screen continuity. Um, and they did an awesome job. We hadn't pra- we actually practiced for it for a team in our league that didn't end up running it. So we kind of had that foundation, but kind of building on, remember what we did for this team? Yeah, we're, we're trying to do that again. And they, they did a really good job with that. So I guess kind of that's a, that's a point where it didn't quite um, separate pieces and, and it worked out well for us. Yeah, it's it's always interesting when you get some when you get film and you're like, I, I played this team two or three times. Like, what is this? <laughs> like, what is this that they're doing? And and it's interesting to to see that process. But then I think it leads to if your players kind of have like these fundamental like skills in place and they're able to, you know, have the ability to do different, you know, things like you said, like ice ball screens or things like that, you don't necessarily have to feel like you as a coach have to like overhaul everything or do things completely different. You just have to communicate these different messages. And then it seems like your players kind of, kind of get it and like, okay, we just have to, you know, ice this ball screen or we have to, you know, go and do this one quick adjustment and it's no big problem. And so it seems like another benefit for your players looking at film so much is that they just understand the game. Well, that if you as a coach kind of just point out like some adjustment they make, it seems like it's, easier for them to kind of pivot and and just make that make that adjustment because they've have so much knowledge and so much game film that they've personally digested is is that kind of a added benefit to to what you do yeah yeah definitely i i think that's 100 percent of you know if they have the foundational understanding Mm -hmm. you know they can they can put their bodies in the right position and you know maybe they don't quite you know, we didn't talk about details of body position on icing a ball screen, but they're going to be close enough for, you know, how we wanted to, to get it done. And it's one of those things where it's, they can kind of learn after the first, you know, possession or two, they're like, oh, I probably need to be standing here and we can, we can talk about those, those little adjustments. But, you know, as long as they have the overarching understanding of, of what we're trying to get done they're going to be close enough to especially in high school to be successful you know at, at college you probably have to have the details a little bit more honed mm-hmm. in because you know better passers better shooters everything but um as long as as long as you're close and you can kind of work through the details and then, then you're going to be okay right and and i wanted to touch on a, a point that you made uh er, earlier in our conversation that uh, I know quite a few coaches have, have experienced and I've experienced it a couple of times. Um, one of the things that you mentioned was that you really want your players to kind of, you know, celebrate their victory that night or, you know, if they want to be upset, be upset that night and then, you know, kind of get back to work the next day. Have you ever had experiences where, you know, you're looking at film And, or even, you know, after the game was over that, yeah, you won, but you just like, weren't happy with what you saw and weren't happy at all. And, and you just weren't tolerating a lot of the stuff that you saw on the court. Do you ever have to have those conversations like the next day where maybe your players are feeling a certain way? Maybe they're a little bit more excited than usual. Maybe they're still ready to focus, but they're still a little bit excited. And you as a coach, like have to say like, yeah, like we won or yeah, we did this, that or the other, but like this, this wasn't good at all. Have you ever had like that where you almost had to like, I guess, bring them down a little bit or kind of bring them back to earth? Or has it always been where they're ready to just kind of get back to work and get better the next day? Yeah, I think there's definitely like, there's always that emotional hangover, you know, one way or the other, you know, we talk about it like, you know, but obviously they're a little bit more excited about practice the next day after a good win than they are after a bad (laughs) loss, you know, and that's just natural and and it's human. And I'm sure I'm more excited after a good win than after a bad loss. And, um, you know, I, I think, you know, but that talking about it and, and I think we can appreciate those those things. And I I think that's important is you should feel bad after a loss. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, you lost. And so we can learn from it. We can move on. And, you know, a good one you should feel good about. And we can still be excited and learn from it. 
and we can always get better. I think it's, you know, regardless of, of the outcome, it, it can be better. And, and we're going to highlight that and, and learn from it so that we can kind of get to where we want to get to, mm-hmm. um, you know, and for every team, you know, especially at the high school when you're, when you're not recruiting, you know, your, your end of the season goal might be different each year. Um, but, you know, we want to play as much basketball as we can and win as many games as we can um, and see where it takes us because th- those experiences are good for sure, for them for sure. And, and we're trying to trying to build that camaraderie and that, and that teamwork. And, and, you know, you look back on it and those are some of your, you know, best memories is hanging out with, with those kids. <laughs> and, and, you, you know, I, I think there's a lot of us still keep in touch with people we played with yeah back in the day so um you know so I, I i think it's just you know consistently trying to maintain that that growth mindset there uh that, that's a good educational term <laughs> growth mindset yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah that's... exactly that's probably in that that teaching book oh yeah the teach like a champion teach i'm like sure champion, yeah. <laughs> i'm sure that's in there um is how much do you include your your staff and your other coaches with your your film process? Are are they right on board with what you're doing? Or are they looking at something a little bit differently? How how is the process with with your staff when it comes to film? Yeah, it's um, you know they're they're obviously involved. Sometimes they can be a little bit more involved than than other days. You know, it's uh, as you know, it's it's challenging for. Mm-hmm. Um, people that you know it's a part-time job it's not even a part-time job it's like you get a high five and somebody gives you 20 bucks for coaching you know <laughs> uh so it, it's hard to, for them to balance their time and so you know i take a lot of the the ownership of it um just because I, I don't want it to burden burden their lives you know they work actual full-time jobs some of them are teachers but for the most part you know they're working nine to fives and to expect them to hop into huddle during you know, whenever is a little bit challenging. So um, we didn't really take, or I, I take that on a little bit more um, just to try and be there. But they sit, you know, obviously sit and help in the film sessions and with their noticings and things like that. And then they'll also, I think more for our, like, uh, game reflections of, not necessarily always for scout, but game reflections of, yeah, I think we did this well. Um, or, you know, I'll send a couple clips to, a coach depending on you know whatever we're trying to do and you know like how would you try to guard this like what do you think is the best way to guard these things so trying to kind of make it easier for for our staff just so that they don't have to spend as much time as as um you know and make sure that they're being useful with their time Mm -hmm. so that they can focus on their lives as well (laughs) yeah it's i think it is important to kind of know your staff like what they're ability is to be invested as well. Like you said, if they have full-time jobs, they have all these other responsibilities. And like you mentioned, if they're doing it almost on a volunteer basis, then you can't necessarily expect their, their commitment to break down film to be the same as yours. It probably shouldn't be. Um, uh, I, I get that. Speaking of, of, of film, do you, I guess the question is what level of, of breaking down film or understanding what what's happening in games how does that go with like your lower levels whether it's like a freshman level or like a jv level is there any sort of process for for them to do film or are they on huddle like what, what's your process kind of with your your other teams on on your program yeah we actually don't watch film for our other teams um you know and that's something that that i probably w- would like to do it's just challenging the sure. w- we had four teams in our program last oh, year so. that's a lot of film <laughs> yeah so just the logistics of of handling that is is a little bit challenging um you know we will invite the younger kids into our varsity film sessions just so that they can kind of see and learn and um i always leave that as kind of a a volunteer basis thing and you know you get couple kids that are pretty bought in that, that want to go show up and learn but um you know and something that we really just focus on varsity occasionally we can grab a jv game and, and they can see it and um that's pretty good and we're also able to to film our practices which mm. we've kind of we got a new system in our gym last year so we're kind of testing it 
And so that's helpful for, for varsity and JV. Um, and then our, our lower levels, our C and our D, if they're in the big gym, they can film their practices too. But, um, you know, more for, for us, it's, we, we just focus on the, on the higher levels there. Yeah, I, I think that that's, that's, it's tricky. You have so much film and, and everything and trying to, you know, <laughs> you, you want to help your, your younger, your younger lower levels as much as you can, but it's almost like there's only so much time in the day, but it seems like for those players who are really bought in, if you have players at your lo lower level who are going to like take the time to maybe look at film or just kind of figure out like what's going on at the varsity level, I'm, I'm sure that kind of it for you as a coach kind of lets you know like all right like the, these players are like they're they're all in and they're invested and they they must really care about getting better which is probably great to see as well because i also think like they have to know right at the lower levels like hey if you're gonna be going up to varsity like you're gonna be doing this so if you have the ability to get better at it now like if you want to take advantage of it sort of thing right right yeah exactly exactly and you know again it's never I guess a surprise of, you know, the, the kids that are usually pretty successful, they're pretty bought in and mm -hmm. they're finding those little extra things to, to do. And, you know, obviously you uh, have those random outliers of sometimes kids are just freakishly athletic and well, maybe they're not as bought in, but yeah, usually the kids that are bought in they're they're trying to find ways to get better no matter what. Yeah. So before we hit our uh, concluding questions, I, I I'm curious, uh, if you've ever had this moment where you're <laughs> where you're going over film or your players are going over film and they bring up something like your players bring up something in film that you have either like never considered or you have no had no idea why they even thought that have you ever had that moment where there's just like a complete breakdown or a complete discrepancy in, in what you saw and what your your team has seen um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure there has been, I can't think of anything quite off the top of my head, but I'm sure that there's definitely been, you know, I mean, we've had a lot of laughs in, in film <laughs> sessions and, uh, you know, I, I think that's also important to try and, you know, keep it light, but also make sure learning happens. You know, there, there's that, that odd balance of, are we just laughing at this so we can deflect the issue or are we laughing because it's actually funny? Mm -hmm. um you know and so i'm sure that there's been a time where actually here here's the one <laughs> is uh as i'm talking through this so we had a kid uh she was a sophomore last year playing varsity um and so we rolled her in and she ended up being a really good defensive player but she was probably like i mean she's like five four like but she kept running and we were getting transitioned on a ton. Mm -hmm. And so I yelled at her, like, quit running in for offensive rebounds. And so she, like, just get back. Like, just get back and move on. Like, stop trying to, what are you going to do with it if you get an offensive rebound? Like, you're 5'4", and amongst the trees. Run back and, and get ready for transition defense. Well, for some reason, she processed that as I'm going to run back whether we're on defense or on offense. <laughs> and so we get to, like, the next defensive possession. Shot goes up, and she just bails on her box out. And she's just sprinting lanes, now uh -huh. transitioning back. <laughs> and so that was probably the, the funniest one uh, of just that's good. breakdown of communication. We, we just see it in film because she – like, we didn't recognize it in the game for whatever reason, but all of a sudden, oh, you know, what, what are you doing here? And she's like, well, you told me to run back. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, we're, on, we're on defense. Oh, and man. everybody's just like, what? That's... And she's just like, like it hit her like, ah, oh, yeah. Oh. And so that was just maybe one of, one of the yeah, funny ones. Yeah, it's – you always have those and, and and but it was helpful to know it was helpful to know like oh that's why you thought that that's funny that's yeah. good <laughs> um so to wrap up coaches a couple of questions i ask every guest so, so this first one um what is a coaching moment of yours from your coaching career that you think others listening would be able to learn from um oh man there's probably so many so many things to to learn Let's from. get like a flood of one. I know I do whenever I yeah. think of that question. <laughs> you know, I, I think maybe it's, it's the one thing that, that I'm still trying to learn is trying to build that, those mental skills, 
Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, again, I would deflect to Coach Close over at UCLA. She's, got, she's been on a several podcasts and several Zooms of, you know, the mental side of, of basketball, I think, is, is so huge and, and not really focused on probably as much as it should be. Um, and, and I think it can be taught and that mental toughness and things like that, those are skills that we can teach kids that beyond probably, you know, they can be a great shooter, but that's not going to help them deal with adversity when they're 25 years old and, you know, maybe they lost their job, you know, but if we can give them that kind of mental fortitude and those mental skills to work through challenges yeah, um, that, that apply to basketball, that's going to actually help them, you know, later down in life than, than really being able to, being able to shoot it well sure and so I think that's I think that's huge and I think that's something that that I've really been trying to dive into and and definitely can can do a better job and I'm excited to implement some of the things that I've learned this year and and hopefully they go well so yeah yeah no, I, I like that a lot about giving them the skills that they need in order to be successful as adults I think that that's that's super important uh, bonus question for you as well, since I know you are a social studies teacher. What is your favorite time period or subject to teach to your kids? Oh, man. So I, I teach uh, U.S. history, so um, primarily. So probably I, I think I jam on a little Cold War. Cold War is some oh, interesting there stuff. You go. So we'll get there here in a, in a few months. Um, but, yeah, that's probably where I spend spend a lot of my time. Love it. Like it. Um Awesome. So to wrap up, uh, I give every guest what I call like a 60 second soapbox. It's their opportunity to get out like a final thought, a closing idea, just a closing message, kind of your final message that you kind of want to leave the listeners with. So coach, I'm going to go ahead and and give you the floor so you can go ahead and take it away. Sure. Well, I, if you've made it this far through my rambling, thank you. <laughs> um, you know, I, I guess is the big, is the big part and, and coach, thanks for having me on um, and, and being a part and, and willing to share, you know, I've, you know, the, the pandemic has been challenging for, for so many people in so many different ways. But I think one awesome thing that's come of it is, is the connection of coaches and, and how we've been able to, you know, you don't have to go to Vegas anymore to get down to uh, a camp or whatever. You can hop on a Zoom and, and coaches have been so willing to share. And so I've just been so appreciative of, of everybody's willingness to share. So, you know, if any if, Anybody's listening that, that I can help, please feel free to reach out to me. If those tools are helpful, feel free to reach out and um, I'll help you however I can as best as I can. So um, just looking forward to getting back to whatever normal will be when, when we get to normal and um, back, in, back in the gym consistently. Can't wait. <laughs> Can't wait for that to happen. But like you said, I think that there's so much hopefully that we continue to do Uh, even after all of this is over, like you said, of like, whether it's virtual clinics or Zooms or just the accessibility for teachers or and and coaches, think about teaching now, for teachers and coaches to connect to one another and and stay connected and just kind of build the game and and be better coaches for our players. So I I, know I think that that's a great thought and uh, awesome to leave off on. So coach, I want to thank you for spending some time talking about film, kind of talk about your program, talk about your girls and, and all the different, uh, aspects you go through of breaking down film and, and going through, uh, all the different steps involved. It was really fun. And I appreciate you giving your perspective. So thank you, uh, coach. Good luck. Hopefully have some games that you can coach and, and your girls can play going forward and, uh, best of luck to you. Thank you for spending some time with us. Uh, coach. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to all of you who listened to another episode of the Basketball Teacher Podcast. Thank you guys so much. We will see you guys next time. Thank you for listening to another edition of the Basketball Teacher Podcast. Make sure to connect with us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Or reach us directly through email at basketballteacherpodcast at gmail.com. Take care, be safe, and we'll see you next time.